What up, y'all? It's your boy R to the A to the S. Yes, Raj here, but see what calls the blog. Today, here to do a review of Swift Higher Learning. Now, coming up next week, the Legacy Conference. Gonna be there. Holler at your boy Raj. Love to meet people who watch this show. So, holler at me. I'll be there Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Now, Let's talk about this album. For me, this is the surprise album of the year so far. Um, his last two albums, to me, I mean, they were okay, but they didn't have the stand power that I would be listening to it a lot. But this album definitely does. Very surprised by the quality of this album. Uh, production is dope. I mean, you got boom bap, you got like a little commercial East Coast type stuff. You know, little southern type stuff. You know, but it's 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 a hard, you know, live instrumentation feel to it. I don't know if it is live instruments, but it has definitely has a feel. But just overall production on this makes my head move, mm, man. That's what I like to hear. And you know, the anthem and you know, revolution, revolution, and theme music. They had those elements. And he just feels like he's going back, you know, and putting together, having hot beats and stuff like that. Um, like I said, um, beats wise, talk about that. Live instrumentation feel on credits, dope, very dope. Okay, uh, another ridiculous beat, just dope. I love how it switches up on this dude, uh, Sherrod White. Uh, you know, he's a real grimy dude. I like how he uh, switches up. You know, I apologize. Another dope, jazzy type of beat. Uh, Nova Kane. It's a dope, you know, commercial type beat. Uh, reminds me of Alice Medina. I don't know if he produced this or not, but it sounds like an Alice Medina beat. Anybody know the production credits? Let me know. Uh, guest appearances. I, I doesn't feel like, hey, he just come on here and rap and just mail me the verse. A lot of these verses, even though they probably weren't together, it just feels like a like a group type of thing. Like like the verses he picked, it just feels like real selective with one just okay, just throw some guest rappers on there. Um, prime example, uh Smoke and Mirrors. How they you know, started out the verses kinda similar. They all have like a similar type of flow. It just felt like a group song man and it's just dope a dime bean you know has a different type of rap style on here than what i've heard from before uh, same thing with belief just a dope song e shine on throne kills it um has more you know the explicit christian rhymes which i'm gonna talk about a little bit later on okay i'm not really familiar with the shirai dude but he's raw he's dope of course the fire life lifey you know he's you know he's lifey man does his thing. Uh, Ritz on survival, uh, you know, dope. Uh, especially like his his little cell phone wordplay with the galaxy and the note and all that type of stuff. That was pretty good. Now Swift, obviously lyrically, you know he's gonna do the storytelling type of stuff, and obviously with us versus them, the police and this hustler and. We know how appropriate that is unless you've been sleeping under a rock or you just haven't been talking to people or you've been working or something like that. You know what's been going on in the media with um, police shooting people and people shooting police and all these types of things. So what, you know, an appropriate song. I found it interesting how, you know, the commonalities between the police and the hustler in the song. Like they both were doing things for their family. Didn't sound like they really wanted the quote unquote jobs they had. And of course these two met up, you know. But yeah, I thought it was a very dope concept type song. Uh, survival, you know, gets into more, you know, the personal rise, man. Uh, gets into, you know, like what's going on in his life and, you know, uh, the trials and things he's been going on, you know, with his wife and cancer and things of that sort and how he survived, you know. So I like I like Swift when he does the personal type of rap, man. 
my still my favorite um, song was you know when his child passed away, held me down, and his father and things of that sort. Uh, so I just like his personal type of raps. Uh, I apologize, you know, another personal rap where you know say he putting his failures out there, showing how he was unloving and then the consequences of his actions. You know, I've been reading through Samuel lately, my man King David. And, you know, that's a perfect example of somebody who made some actions and choices, and then you see the results of what happens through those actions and choices. So again, you know, just dope. Now, content-wise, even though he said that, you know, in the first song he doesn't like the term, you know, conscious rapper, I mean, he's pretty much, you know, overall a positive conscious rapper now, you know. He's no longer the rapper we were used to on, you know, Anthem, you know, things of that sort, revolutionary. He's, he's changed. He's no longer doing the explicit quote-unquote evangelistic type of rhymes. Um, you know, there are some references, you know, saying God, my Savior, things of that sort. But overall, this is not a, you know, album that's explicitly evangelistic. Um, but at the same time, you know, I found it interesting that he did pick some rappers who were, you know, explicitly in their rhyme. They're not, they don't use the same approach that he does, but he has a on this album, so I found that interesting. Uh, of course, you know I gotta go to the negative. You gotta, you gotta. This is a rise review. You gotta be negative, all right? Uh, T.J. Pompey. I'm not saying he's bad. I mean the hook, you know, it's kind of catchy, but I mean he prayed, basically did a Tory Lanez to Drake. You know, those of you who follow, you know, mainstream, you know who Tory Lanez sounds like, and you know who T.J. Pompey. His whole style sounds like you know who. So, I mean, I can't really, you know, get with that, man. Uh, King, now, I'm not the dude to be like, oh, you can't have braggadocia rhymes and the Bible says not to boast. Look, I get it, you know what I'm saying? I grew up on hip-hop, so I get that stuff. But at the same time, for me, it's just a certain limit. I mean, he does some braggadocia rhymes on here, which is okay, but... For me, I'd rather have more content than hearing how dope you are as an MC. I'm not against it, you know, from a spiritual, Christian type of way, but just for me, I want to hear more content, man. I want to hear more of what's going on in your life, not how dope you are as an MC. I, you know what I'm saying? For me personally, um, I'm past that, man. Um, and you know, Dream Duck is, they got to use it. The, the explicit language, you know, say the H word on here. You know, they got a cuss, so. That's Dream Junkies. But overall, man, I, I felt this album a lot. I think it's a, a, a excellent project put together, production, hooks, rhymes, all of that, man. All of these are, you know, essentials into putting together, you know, an excellent album. So that's my thoughts on it. Love to hear yours. See what we'll cost a blog. Skip Bayless sucks and I'm out.